Our mom is actually our biggest supporter. She sends us little care packages sometimes uh, because food can be scarce when you're just living as a super frugal lifestyle. She sends good shit too. We got canned chicken. You can microwave these and put orange sauce on them and they're not too bad. <laughs> you know? Whenever the class isn't going on, we turn off the heat for the whole night. And that's where I get this really, really homeless look going. But hey, it keeps you warm. So my first opponent's not here yet, and the, what was supposed to be my second match, one of them got COVID, and the other one hasn't shown up yet. <laughs> um, if, if neither of them show up, I actually get a buy all the way to the finals. But I have really bad luck, so that's that's not gonna happen. <laughs> we coming. We just watching Andrew do his thing right now. Look at the man. It's, it's my first IBGGF black belt tournament, and I'm thinking, thank God they can't go for fucking heel hooks yet because what can they really do to me otherwise? I'm pretty hard to sweep. If I pull guard, I don't think anyone's gonna pass my guard in the division. You know, I don't think I'm really gonna get tapped out either. I mean, it's possible. And I'm gonna feel really stupid if I just get knee barred or something, but I feel pretty strong going in. I don't think there's anyone that can stand in his way. Andrew Nogi is something that just can't be stopped. He's like a fucking freight train. I just feel like the medium heavy guys stylistically just don't match up well for a Nogi Andrew. I just think that Andrew might, might have already outclassed these guys, man. You know, I could just kind of tell like his morale's re really up right now, and I, I don't know, man. I think he's gonna come out and dominate. I, I don't, I don't think anyone's gonna be able to hold on to him at all. I think he's gonna run away with it. I popped my shoulder, and something's wrong with it. I've been going to the doctor since, but it's feeling okay today. So, let's see what I got. Bird is probably gonna do okay. He's got a pretty small bracket. We've actually trained with a couple of guys in the division he's gotta go against, and they're really good. I think Bird has a good chance of beating him, though. We're gonna go to Lowe's and get some lumber and we're just gonna start building shit. I wanna make our living situation a little better with the kitchen. I'm thinking about extending the shed out. I don't know if I have enough time to do that today though. Wait, what? Extending the shed another like six feet is on the plans. How far we can do that? We've got a saw. <laughs> we can do anything with a saw and a drill, bro. <laughs> Let's do it. I was a bouncer, you know, I got paid like $65, $70 a night, which that's when back when we made no money at all. And we were like, hell yeah, we'll do that. I've shot on guys on concrete and ripped my skin off to the bone. You're always fighting like crackheads and stuff. And <laughs> let me tell you, man, if you think that Kanye's strong, wait till you fight a crackhead. <laughs> they are fucking strong. What we do now for money is that we teach jujitsu, and jujitsu is a niche sport, and we're not very, we're, we're semi good at it, so we, we do okay-ish sometimes. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, wait, no, this is the fancy wood. We don't want this. So the first thing we want to build, we think we're going to build little tables so that we can like, you know, we can sit on the ground, have our food at a height we can actually kind of eat off of. Just, just like convenient stuff. And I think it only costs like 20 bucks. We're, we're not exactly expert craftsmen. So a lot of this is trial and error. It's kind of stuff you can't really mess up too bad because you know, if we, if we make our table and it's not level, we'll just make it work. You know what I mean? We made the shed work. So this is the cheapest wood we can fit in the car. <laughs> Look at the $10 one to your right. That'd make two tables. Yeah, we, we can build a shelf in two tables with that. I'll go put this back. Everyone in the town knows Pedagos because we've been in town forever, but yeah. they don't realize that we're like a actually decently well-known around the world and people move here from like Australia and the Netherlands and everything. They see I have like Jiu-Jitsu shirts on. They're like, oh dude, you do Jiu-Jitsu, man. It's me too, man. I do Krav Maga. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's exactly the same. <laughs> okay, so we got this big thing to make a shelf out of, that to make a table out of. Uh, these are gonna be the legs. We're gonna cut them up and try to make them actually level. The biggest hassle is gonna be getting these in our car. Me and Bert are experts at making random shit work. So we can fit it through the hole up here though. We got the other stimulus check from Trump. 
and we fucking hate Trump, but he gave us $600, so. Me and Bird decided we wanted to not waste it on food and stuff. We wanted to do something to maybe make our quality of living just a little better. And, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna have to move more stuff out of the way. Okay, never mind, we're good, we're good. Okay, <laughs> kinda. <laughs> Me and Bird don't care that we live in a piece of shit. We're just wired in the way that that doesn't bother us. You know what I mean? But like normal people, you know, that try to move in the gym and they, they the things that bother them, it's like, oh, it's hard to cook. Um, you gotta shower outside under the fucking backpack, you know? Uh, that bothers them. So it's like, anything we can do to improve our life and make it easier for new guys that wanna come in and do what we've done, and, you know, this is just gonna make it easier. We actually got everything to fit. Last time. Yeah, no, this is way better than last time. All right, we're good to go. So we uh, decided to upgrade our kitchen. So we've got our new uh, shelf. Don't lean on it, but you, you can look at it. <laughs> uh, so we can just keep the hot plate out here, and then we can actually hook everything up. You know what I mean? We, we can cut stuff on here, like put our plates down while we're making our food. We've got our fancy $20 coffee pot that turns on on its own at 10.30 or whatever time we set to. Uh, so I'm gonna put the new tables we're building right now under here and we can pull them out and sit down on the ground and eat off them instead of eating off the ground. Which that's, I mean, that's gotta be some kind of improvement, right? We've got our new oven that we can cook nice things in like chicken and uh, pizza, you know. <laughs> Super safe. We're just kind of winging it right now, though, using like kind of prior knowledge and kind of guesswork. But you know, how, how bad can you really fuck up a little table? You know, how bad can you fuck up a box? It's a box. Ah, fuck! Ah. <laughs> the cuts don't have to be good <laughs> for this to work. Function over form for us. As long as it works, it doesn't have to look good. <laughs> it's slightly scary. <laughs> it's okay, this is fine. Everything is fine. Nobody dies. Oh, that's not straight. <laughs> it's okay. So this is table one and that's table two. So the idea is, okay, a table to eat off of should be 16 inches, you think? Or 17? <laughs> Every 16 inches, I'm gonna make a mark. We need eight of these. Our measurements are in ish. These are my safety shoes, by the way. <laughs> We're okay. <laughs> Everything is fine. That was not fine. Okay, ignore that. Okay, it's gonna get fucking terrifying. I just realized that was really dangerous. That got really close to the saw. Don't fucking move. That. Mm -hmm. This is not going to Oh shit. Ah, that didn't work. What did you do? <laughs> what did you do? Uh, you missed. Scratch that one. Hold it. <laughs> hey, we got a leg. <laughs> You're alright. You're okay. Don't worry. Trust. <laughs> Dude, you don't. Have you seen fucking uh, Solo? <laughs> he's got like three fingers. It's okay. Don't panic. Don't panic. Uh, listen, if me and Bird were seriously super concerned about getting hurt, we wouldn't be doing full-time jujitsu. <laughs> Hey, one more. Wait hey. a second. No! Bird! <laughs> what did you do? Why are you looking at me? <laughs> normal, 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 backwards. <laughs> so we cook, cook our food, pull our little tables out, we sit down, and we can eat our food. 
perfect. If me and Bert are gonna be like semi kind of rich, we might as well invest in the gym. You know what I mean? Because this is our fucking home. We've lived in the gym for eight years. We've lived in this building for going on four or five years now. Maybe we're gonna get a new building one day, but it just clearly is not happening. So we might as well just give in. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look at the wobble. It's perfect. <laughs> So my next big project is when we have enough money to get a sink. I don't know how much they're gonna cost. We're gonna upgrade our sink in there. And if I learn how to do piping well enough, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make like a kitchen in the, uh, in the second box. <laughs> you know, we'll just make a duplex out there. We'll start building multi-story houses. Oh, what um, did you do? <laughs> it's better. <laughs> let's, well, let's see. Literally, it's better. <laughs> you always doubt me. tapped me out twice in 30 seconds with ankle locks, which is actually bad for him though, because now all he does is train ankle locks. I mean, he does really good, but some guys you just can't ankle lock. You know, they, they'll, they'll let their foot explode or their rubber bandy. He's gotta up his meta a little bit, man. He knows how to pass right, but he's just like little Jacob in all hunter. He doesn't trust his passing. Bird's always hurt, man. Um, we're trying to get him rehabilitated to where he can really train hard and roll hard. Satya didn't get to train a lot before this, you know what I mean? He's kind of like Andrew. They're like voodoo doll, you know? If one of them's hurt, the other one seems to kind of be hurt. So he lost to Zach Kaina in the, in the finals. He's extremely tough, you know, from art of jiu-jitsu. And uh, I'd like to see Bird just like open up and just, you know, bang, you know what I mean? It's like he can pass like his brother and, you know, when he competes, he, he never believes in his, you know, cardio really, you know what I mean? So if, if he just put it all on the line a little bit more, you know what I mean? I think that he would kill it. So I get a little rug for when you like walk in so you don't track your mud everywhere. I was gonna get one that said welcome, but uh, no one's really welcome in here. So <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> I just got a blank one. And then another little rug in here so you can take your shoes off and not get mud all over the fucking box. Life in the box was really hot and then it got really cold. You can see the sun coming in through the holes in the shed still. Unless I had the money to fully insulate the shed, there's zero point to having a heater in here. But I have the electric blanket on the bottom and an electric blanket on top, so it's not so bad. Like, as long as you just don't ever, never leave the blankets, then you're good. I have the box that Panda Express gave me. That's got my card, my fortune cookies, everything. It's got the little Panda. How cold is it getting here at night? Whatever the temperature is outside, it will be that temperature in here within 20 minutes. It's always warmer in the gym. So you just prefer the privacy? Yeah, I built the box for the privacy, man. Because, you know, listening to everyone breathe all the time is, is fun, you know, for the first seven years. <laughs> and around the eighth year, I'm like, you know what? I kind of want to have my own little spot. When I lived in Michigan, my dad had moved into a trailer and he built a box basically like this, but actually better than this because my dad's a mechanic. And uh, that was nice. I was playing StarCraft at the time, and I remember it. I used to go to sleep with a snowmobile suit on, multiple blankets over top of me, the full full hat, ski mask, and gloves and shit, just go to sleep because you'd be negative 30. Out there in the negative 30 playing StarCraft? Yeah. Okay. Living in the gym and living in the box is really not too different to how we grew up a lot of the time. We were very, 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 very poor in Michigan. We didn't have a house. We didn't have a plan. My dad, he took a chainsaw and cut the back half of a van off and then put a bunch of hoops, like metal hoops that folded up and down and tarped it and made the back half a camper with a bed and stuff. So we lived in that for three months looking for a place to rent. We're used to the unorthodox living style. When we lived in California, my dad built our house. It was a trailer originally that my dad just took wood and started building off of. So this is normal for me. Just, just build what you're gonna live in. It doesn't have to be perfect. It, it just works for us. Me and Bird are never moving out of the gym. I need to be in that environment to keep my addictive personality and my, my bipolar disorder and my constant battle with depression fucking focused. 
You know, if I'm not at the gym and I get depressed and I get addicted to something else, I'm probably screwed. I need to be immersed in the environment. So like, for me living in the gym, I have to be there. Like, if you're gonna live in the gym, it's easy, if you're tired as fuck, you're sore as fuck, it doesn't matter because everyone shows up at your house and you have to get up. So it's like, it's just harder. It's harder to live outside of the gym and do what we do than it is to live in the gym. But if you're used to like having easy access to a shower, you can just wake up and walk to every day. Like I know some of the guys that have tried moving in the gym and they're like from really nice environments where their parents had a lot of money and they had like multiple stories to their house, or whatever fancy stuff. It's jarring for them. Like I said, me and Bird didn't grow up that way. So for us, it was no transition at all. It was just normal. You know, the guys are all getting little houses that are all like putting 10 people in a house. So they're gonna be end up spoiled and soft. So then I'm just gonna beat them up enough in class that they wanna train harder. I was just looking at the results and after Bird came in with the second place, Troy, and then we had George and Couch and little Jacob. Uh, they just got put on the uh, list. Yeah, it's looking good. I think we've got a really good chance. You know, if we can get Andrew on the podium, I think we have a good chance at winning. I actually just blew my back out last Wednesday. The disc slipped out. It takes like three days before I can sit up. And like I can move a little bit right now. I, I kind of don't want to invert, but I don't think that's going to stop me in like competition day because you'll have adrenaline and I'm just going to do it and fuck the consequences. Nice. Stick it, Andrew. Get his chest on the bow on the mat. And he's going to keep rolling through. Just stick it. Good. Stick it, Andrew. Watch the wrestler. Andrew, circle to your left, circle to your left again. Nice. Hey. Hey. Nice, you got plenty of time, Andrew. Good, plenty good, squeeze, squeeze. Keep the pressure, buddy, keep the pressure. Good. Hey. Hey. Good pressure, Andrew. Eight minutes, eight minutes. Nice, Andrew, nice. Just relax, chill out. Two more matches. If he's gonna expose his back, let him. If not, just relax. Go finish it. Huh? So far, so good. It was perfect. I was working to sweat up without really getting tired. I am being really cautious in my back, though. It's okay right now. If I shot, though, it, it, it would be bad, probably. I don't feel like I can pick anything up. So I have to be, I have to find some hidden technique <laughs> instead of just power. Not that I have a lot of that. That's him right there. He's super good. I have to check that last one off, you know and I mean? I have to win something in black belt. Now it's like the final frontier. There's superstars in black belt that are established and they've been rolling with other guys that are amazing forever. So it's like now I get to see if I can actually handle those guys or if I'm just going to get beat up. You know, maybe I'm just not good enough yet. Maybe I have to learn still. A lot of people don't really realize how good Andrew is. I, you know, I've trained with the best in the world and, and I've trained with Andrew a lot. I think he can shock a lot of people. Let's go. Let's get to your stuff. Let's get to your stuff, Andrew. Right on. It's all going to be outside passing. It's all going to be outside passing, all right? There we go. Nice. Keep recovering, Andrew. Perfect. Same thing all day. When he steps in, we go. Eight minutes, Andrew. Eight minutes. He's going to do the same thing. Points, Andrew, you got your points. We can do this all day, Andrew. You're looking good. Keep pummeling, do the same thing. It's easy work, mate. As long as he's outside passing, you're good. Just keep doing the same thing over and over and over. He's got to come, he's got to commit. As soon as he does, you're going to sweep. He's going to start getting desperate with that outside passing. Let's put it on. Nice, Andrew. Perfect. Good, good, good. good. Two minutes left. Two minutes. 
Can't lasso no gi, Andrew. <laughs> One more to be the 2020 adult black belt, no gi, medium heavy champion. champion. We know that no one can pass Andrew's guard from the outside, so he knows that himself too. Like when he's looking over and smiling at us, he understands what we're saying is just coaching the voice inside of his head, you know? It's fucking incredible, fuck it. I realized he was kind of just jumping around, which is not how you pass no gi. You know, you have to like stick in on no gi stuff, so it's like, once you know someone doesn't know how to pass no gi, you know that you can just do whatever you want, basically. Like, it might be hard to sweep him, and it might be hard to tap him, but you know they can't pass you, so you can kind of, like, go at your leisure. I haven't gotten tired yet, which is nice. That's not the case normally. Normally I'm fucking much, exhausted much harder. after 10 minutes. So I won a, a match on one of the Fuji Pro cards, and they said I got a DVD deal with BJJ Fanatics. So I figured my favorite thing in the world is guard passing. I put the most time into guard passing. So I'm gonna do like a white to black mastery guard passing system. You know what I mean? Like, like what you should be focusing on is a white belt. The drills that I did to get good at doing guard passing is a white belt, blue belt, purple belt. I'm filming it in about five days. I've got pages and pages and pages of like notes from every single guard pass. I'm still learning stuff all the time, but I can definitely help people win at white, blue, purple, brown, e even up to black belt. I can help people have the foundation that they need to be a good guard passer because I don't think there's very many good guard passers in jiu-jitsu. They are good guard passers, they're just rare, it's harder. Passing a good guard player's guard takes serious dedication. So I'm gonna help them bully the fucking guard pullers. What are you gonna do when you get that money? I'm gonna get some orange chicken first. And then we're gonna work on a second box for Bird. And we're gonna like cut a door so me and Bird can open it and when we're playing video games we can talk to each other and shit. So it's gonna be great. Oh, well, this is just protein. There's no uh, acai and Jesus in our stuff. <laughs> So I was just trying to foot sweep people and get them with shit and Orlando came at me. It's just a bump, I actually didn't know I was cut. Once it stops bleeding, it's probably not so bad. I'll probably just assess the damage later. It, ain't too, it can't be too bad. Because I'm a doctor and clearly I know. Yeah. His whole family are healers, so this is probably, he's probably the best guy for it. I'm pretty sure my mom was wrong about that, but. <laughs> My parents would tell us that dark wizards were trying to cast spells on us because they were light wizards and they were trying to heal the world and stuff, you know what I mean? And they would have these group meetings around the crystal and they'd do these chants. Each one was supposed to do something different. Like they, they thought they'd like put the fires out in Australia and they like were trying to stop the war in Afghanistan. Just like any, any natural disaster, they would try to do something about it try to send out positive energy to fight the dark wizard's negative energy. So, I mean, our, our childhood was pretty wild. I remember when we were four or five, our mom used to make us do a, a drill where we would sit in front of a mirror and you're supposed to stare at your forehead. And she said, you know, when you, when you stare at your a face in the mirror, your, your face starts to morph because it's, it's just optical illusions. Your brain's playing, playing tricks on you. But she told us it was us remembering our face and our past lives. And that was one of the ways you became psychically stronger. We used to have crystal wands and shit that our dad would make us. It would like bamboo, but he would like hollow them out and use epoxy to glue crystals in them and shit. And we always imagined we could make them in the lightsabers and they would tell us we could do that one day if we became magically or psychically strong enough. We believed that growing up. You know, if your parents tell you this is true, this, this is just the truth. Everything I did, I did as hard as I could. So I'd be like playing volleyball with the kids and I'd be like magically trying to make the wind blow to cool me off. And it would work all the time, you know, 50% of the time. So <laughs> you think it works. I mean, you really do think the stuff works when you're in it. When I was in the fifth grade or the fourth grade is when I really started getting heavily into books. I remember I read The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and you know, I became obsessed with reading. Reading makes you think more critically. It expands your knowledge of so much stuff that you start to look outside the box a little bit and it, you can kind of rethink whatever belief system you have with outside perspective. 
I privately left when I was going 15, 16, 17. Just an ongoing process. You just the more you learn how to think critically, the more you can examine absurd beliefs. You, you should have reasons for everything. It should apply to your jiu-jitsu too. You should have reasons for why you're doing what you're doing, how you push the leg, how you turn your hand, what muscles you're using, when you're going for it. It should apply all over the place. When you start thinking critically, you can apply it to a lot of different stuff. What are you reading currently? I have uh, 36 tabs all on my phone. So like I've got a Pokemon fan fiction there. Worth the Candle is a D&D fan fiction basically. I've got a rational Naruto quest that's going on. What about your gaming? You said you've, you've put the games away for now, but... I have to be pretty confident in my jiu-jitsu to feel like I can lose myself into a game. We have a super addictive personality, so we get addicted to games really easily. And that's why you see I'll put my computer completely away for a while because I have to reset and really double down on my jiu-jitsu. When we're addicted, let's say we'll wake up and we'll do our morning training and do our conditioning and our stretching and stuff. We'll play fucking get video games all the way up until we have to train again at night, and then we'll play it again until 3, 4 in the morning. And normally when I go a whole two days without sleeping because I was playing video games, that's when I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna put the computer away now <laughs> and just cannot play video games for a while. Like when I put the video games away, I become addicted to jiu-jitsu because that's the next only, the only thing I have in my life other than that, you know what I mean? So that's when I become so obsessed that I'm watching footage all day. And then I, I make really big gains on my technique. You know, and then I get in really good shape, and then and that's usually when I go and like I win the pans of the world or something. It's because I had that moment where I'm like, okay, I haven't slept in three days. I should probably, <laughs> you know, really put this shit away and get serious. Our addictive personality, it's a pro and a con. You know, you're addicted to jiu-jitsu, you keep becoming a jiu-jitsu god. Addicted to video games, you don't sleep for three days. <laughs> Balance. I've never tried a VR thing before. I've, I've always wanted to. Uh, I tried like a really good VR headset and shit. So you're gonna hold them and your thumbs? Don't don't look at them. You can't see them. I can see them literally. You I can, can see them right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's it say? Does it say continue? This is virtual porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> play. Can you press play? Okay. <laughs> Just look around. Just don't move. Just look around. I'm it's St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, I'm about to watch she's, this. She's got clothes on. <laughs> She'll take them off in a second. Just wait. Get it, Andrew. Look, what are you selling with it? Get it, Andrew. Let's get real serious real quick. This is wrong, Andrew. What you're doing is wrong. He hasn't moved the whole time. He knows. Do you know the guy you're about to compete? Yeah, he almost broke my hand when he shook it. He's strong as fuck. Alright, so we got him anyways. The motherfucker is so strong. Man, I did not want him on my head. <laughs> Does that change your strategy now? No. <laughs> I'm pulling, I'm pulling guard, bro. <laughs> He's a self-doubter, you know, he's a self-criticizer. You know, I say it every time. The day that Andrew Wiltsey believes in himself the same way that his team believes in him, I think it's over for everybody, man. I think he's gonna run away with it. No matter what match it is, he always has that, like, energy of, like, he's nervous and he thinks he's gonna lose or whatever, you know what I mean? He has that fire that's really important. It keeps him fresh, it keeps him young in that game, you know? Let's do it, let's go! Good, look good, look good. Good. Same as the last match, same as the last match. You're waiting, you're looking good. Keep the middle. Looking great, buddy. Good, good, Andrew. You stay on it, Andrew, you stay on it. He's just looking to hang on your head, bro. Uh, he's not stepping into pass, Andrew, no worries. You keep going, he's backing up. Good, perfect angles, perfect angles, perfect angles. Good three minutes, he hasn't came forward once yet. Andrew, halfway, baby, halfway. Just keep doing what you're doing, he's gotta commit. Sooner or later, he's gotta commit. It's coming. This is it, let's go. Nice, nice. Yes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. If I die, Beautiful, beautiful, perfect, perfect. We're staying there until he commits. Go, 
Perfect angle. If he comes forward, you're underneath him. You know that now. All right, Andrew, 59 seconds. Here it comes. Be ready. Perfect angles. Perfect angles. I bet 500 on that food to win, so. Build it up. Steak dinner for everybody. <laughs> you look great, man. You look great. Everyone should buy Gordon Ryan's Gord Passing DVD. I'm sure it'll help them. <laughs> uh, but it feels like no one knows what they're doing still. That's why they run. You made it look easy, man. This shit was slick. You're sitting there like, what the fuck you gonna do, man? You should've just started hitting them with the... As usual, Andrew performed and kicked ass at Black Belt. That wasn't 100% Andrew, by any means. He did what he had to do to win, and he got it done because he's a fucking champion, and that's what he does. But when Andrew's at 100% and he's on and he's mentally right, everyone's dead. No one can mess with him. He's literally the best human I've ever put my hands on in jiu-jitsu in my whole entire life. Hey, got one. No, got one. <laughs> Andrew smashed it out. Very first black belt tournament for IBJJF when he hit the ground running, you know what I mean, a gold medal. And I don't think it was close. I think he dominated everybody. The, the guys were petrified to even touch him. I actually got a little bit emotional before the finals because then he kind of like hit you. He's like, holy shit, this is the black belt finals. We've been dreaming about doing this since we were a white belt. You know, this is it. I just got to go win this and then I've done it. I've won either the pans or the worlds at every belt now. So that's all of them. We did it. <laughs> I didn't open the throttle today, and luckily I didn't have to. I could have, but I definitely didn't have to. So the guys just don't know how to pass no gi. You know, I mean? there's no pressure on the outside, no gi passing. They have to come in and be in the pocket, you know. And then none of them wanted to do that. If I touched them at all, they would disengage, run away, circle around, and basically fuck off the clock for 10 minutes. But they did it while they were behind, which is maybe not an optimal strategy. I don't know, because I think we are going to get on the podium, which would be huge. You know, Andrew, he kind of had a back injury, and I wasn't sure if he was going to come. At the last minute, he pulled through and just said, look, you know, if, if there's a real shot that we can win this thing, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out there and fuck, you know, I'll do my best for you, you know. And to me, all he's got to do is show up. He knew that no one was going to pass his guard and that he could, you know, pressure them. And if he got on top, he just, just murked him, you know what I mean? So he did amazing. When I, when I blew my back out, I'm like, God damn it, there goes the pans, you know what I mean? I'm like, fuck. So I definitely got in my head a little bit leading up to this, you know, and in your head, you're like, oh man, these guys are superstar black belts. I'm really not good enough. Oh, I want only the lower belts. This is the real deal, which, and that's all true. But at the same time, it's like, I'm going to try to do the same thing to Buchecha that I'm going to try to do to random fuck out black belt. You know what I mean? You, if you don't trust your technique, you're never going to win, but you still have to do your stuff. No matter who it's against, you have to believe in your jujitsu. I think this is a positive message to other people out there living in a plywood box with uh... Listen, if you can make a plywood box, I, I advise that you do it. It's actually pretty amazing. <laughs> like, just follow me. To be the best, you have to be crazy. Plain and simple, you know? You have to be willing to live on the mats. You have to be willing to sleep on the mats. You either have that or you don't. You can go hard for six hours a day or you can't, you know? And, 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 and he's definitely got that work ethic, man. You know, he's got that champion mentality. I, I think he's just getting started. A lot of people will see a lot of positive things from him in the future. I think the vivid imagination of thinking we are at war with dark wizards all the time and like trying to use our magic powers and shit, I think that actually did help me with visualization. Like no joke, I think that having such an imagine-filled childhood all the time, you just, you're just you seeing these things in your head, you, you think you're really doing magic, you're, you're like trying to imagine it, you know what I mean? That helped me learn how to just have that neuroplasticity to see moves in my head, you know what I mean? Like to get those flashes and make connections and stuff. So I think that was actually good for me, believe it or not. So when I lived in Michigan, my dream, li literally, if you ask me, what, what's your dream for your life? I told everyone for years, I want to live in a gym and train full time and just fight full time. So when I was 20, 
and I got the offer to move into the gym. I got the offer to f fulfill my life dream. So then once you're already doing your dream, what do you do next? You know, and then I had to come up with goals for myself. The generic one is I want to win the pans and the worlds at every belt. I've won the pans at every single belt now. You know, I want to win the worlds at black belt. I want to win the ADCC at black belt. I want to cement myself as being one of those guys that's going to give to the sport in terms of progressing technique and optimizing how you're supposed to train and everything like that. You're looking for an easy roll? There's none? Let's go here the easy roll. I'm not for in Illinois. There's just not a lot of opportunity and a lot of stuff here. <laughs> they can't be me. Not yet. If you dedicate yourself every day to something, yes, and you've truly given everything you can to that, it'll work out.